Um, that's divisible by 16. Good. So what's our first then, step? There should always be a first step on the order of the square root of A times B is the square root of A times the square root of B. So this okay. is what you're always looking to do, which is to say factor that number. All right. And one of the factors being a perfect square number, which you already identified. You said six. Oh, yeah. What's the other factor? Five. Okay. What does that turn into? Uh, four square root five. Okay, good. Now, it isn't always absolutely necessary that you find the largest perfect square number. Let's write the perfect square numbers over here. Notice that not everybody would notice that 16 is a factor of 80. But 4 is for sure. Right? So you yeah. can always do these things in pieces. In other words, I could start out doing that which is 2 okay. root 20, but then root 20 is also divisible by 4, so that would be root 4 times root 5, and you get to the same spot. You don't get to it as quickly as you would doing it the other way. Uh, in other words, when you realize that 16 was one of the factors, that got to the solution a lot faster. But okay. you don't want to spend a whole lot of time. In other words, if you were taking a test or something, eh, you don't necessarily want to spend all day figuring out the maximum perfect square factor of 80. So right. find a factor of it that's one of these numbers over here and just start whittling it down kind of like I did this way. Uh, not that I'm suggesting this is the way to do it. It isn't. The way to do it was the first way. But like I said, it's not always easy to figure out what those perfect square numbers are. Uh, in general, are you, well, uh, let's go over a few more of these. Um, how about this? Um. That's the same as square root 9 over square root 4, right? Correct. And that's the key. Awesome. Which means that that is 3 over 2. <coughs> okay. Now, yeah. there is one situation that's a little strange. How about that one? Um... Don't you, aren't you able to, like, uh, multiply it by itself, kind of? What's the first step? Um, what you do on the last problem. That's the first step. Uh, identify it as square root 1 over square root 2. Correct. Which now becomes 1 over square root 2. What's the problem with that answer? Um, now, I'm not sure. Now you have to do what you were talking about doing. Okay. Which is rational. It's called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. It is not appropriate to divide by an irrational number. So we're going to turn that irrational denominator into a numerator by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 2. In other words, I can multiply any fraction I want by the number 1. And that's merely the number 1 right there. Okay, and now what that turns into is square root of 2 over 2. So that's the proper answer. Now, if you put this in your calculator, it's going to give you exactly the same number as if you put that in your calculator. It's okay. just a convention that we do not divide by irrational numbers. We always 
have to rationalize the denominator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's going to apply on a lot of fractions. Um, all right, let's talk about something else here. There's nothing, and it's you're covering it in this first chapter. Um, you've picked back up on chapter nine, is that correct? Right triangles. Uh, I'm not sure. We haven't looked at the book in a long time, but yeah, we work a lot with right, right triangles. Well, you got um, right, you got right triangles coming up really quick. If if you haven't gotten to it yet, so let's, let's okay. talk about right triangles. There's nothing you're going to learn in geometry that's more important than the Pythagorean theorem. I'm sure you've already, okay. you've already covered it probably multiple yeah. times even before you got to geometry. Uh, but it basically says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay? Yeah. Which means as long as that's a right triangle, that has to be true. So, what I really, normally I'm a big fan of learning one formula, and then anything that you need to solve for, you can always start with this and just start solving it, whether it's for C, A, or B. But the problem is, is that these are so common. You are going to have to solve so many right triangles over the next couple of years uh, okay. that I would like you to learn this. When you're solving for one of the sides of a right triangle, your answer always begins with the square root of. In other words, if I'm solving for the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle, then my answer is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so let's put some numbers here. Tell me what c is. Uh, c is uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared. No, remember, always, or I guess always I start your screen. answer out with square root of. Because what I have found is, is that at least 80% of my students make the mistake you just made. Uh, they okay. put out the square root. They might do the a squared and the b squared, but a lot of them want to do this. And that's simply not true. Okay, C is not the square root of A plus B. C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. So what is C in okay. this case? Huh? What is C in this case? Uh, C would equal the square root of 4 plus 3. 4 squared plus 3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh huh some reason. Hold on a moment. My cursor stopped writing. Let me reload this program up. Uh-oh. I don't like that. Okay. All right. So when you're solving for the hypotenuse, it's pretty easy. C is always going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. The other situation you're going to have to solve for is when they give you the hypotenuse and one other side. In other words, let's say they give you that and they give you this. Well, the other side, in other words, there's only two situations you have to solve for. You have to solve for a hypotenuse, and sometimes you have to solve for one of the short sides. And one of the short sides, and it doesn't really matter whether you call it A or B, 
but the answer always starts out square root of, and then here you got the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. Okay. Or if I was solving for B, it would be the hypotenuse squared minus A squared. Okay. The key difference is you have subtraction going on under the radical sign. Whereas when you're solving for the hypotenuse, you have addition. Now, I don't generally write both of these because if you can remember this one, you can certainly figure out or remember this one. So I really only have two formulas that I ask students to memorize, and that's these two. This is the hypotenuse. This is one of the short sides. So, okay. in this case, what is A? A is the square root of 7 squared plus 4 squared. Minus. Remember, always, Minus. always subtraction going on under the radical sign when you're solving for a short side. Okay? And this is the way I'd like to see you always give me the answer. I, in other words, I know that you can do the arithmetic and you end up with 49 minus 16, which is 33. So we're going to get to 33, but when I'm going to test you on these problems, I almost prefer my answer to be in this form here. And the reason is you'll learn it much quicker. So, I'm going to give you some right triangles, and I'm going to erase this, both of them. And I want you to solve for the unknown side. And okay. all I want you to do is give it to me, like, what's x equal to? x is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared. like pi, I meant to write square root of 11. So what's x equal to now? Um, hmm. x is equal to x is equal to the hmm. square root of, always start your answer that way. Uh, it's equal to the square root of, I know 21 is a perfect square, yeah, of 11. Right? But what we're um, squaring is this. Yeah. So it would be so the square root. Does that just turn into 11? It would be a, the square, yes, it does. But it's the square okay. root of 11 squared. Okay. My, what's um, the, and then minus 4 squared. Okay. Now, in this one, let's go ahead and come up with a number. What's the square root of 11 squared? Okay. Um, squared. It's just 11. It's 4 squared? 16. So what's, what's wrong here? Why, is, why, why do we end up with the square root of a negative number? Uh, because the hypotenuse is less than that Very side. good. Very good. I did it intentionally to, to try to catch you. In other words, you cannot have a right triangle where the hypotenuse is square root of 11 and one of the short sides is 4. This is bigger than this. Square root of 11 is a number that's between 3 and 4. So you can't have... The definition of right triangles is the hypotenuse always has to be the longest side. Okay? So that's helpful when you go to memorize this thing. 
because you're never going to put the short side there minus the hypotenuse here. You'd end up with a negative number. And incidentally, you're not going to get a problem like this either. Nobody, no teacher's going to do it. I, I, I kind of accidentally did it, and then after I did it, I realized I'd done it, and I wanted, I was curious to see if you could pick up the mistake. Uh, okay. So, if I made that 17, now it works, because now I would have 17 minus 16 square root of 1, that side would be 1. Okay. Now, there are, like I said, over the next two or three years, I mean, just when you take the ACT test, you're going to have to solve 10 right triangles. However, there are a couple that are unique. They're perfect Pythagorean triangles, the smallest of which is this one. In other words, there's no such thing as a 2, 3, 4 or a 1, 2, 3. This is it. This is the smallest as it gets. And the next one you run into is this one, 5, 12, 13. So it's kind of a good idea to know these triangles, and, and the reason is, it's not so much they're always going to be 3, 4, 5. In other words, that might be 30, 40, 50. If I gave you this triangle here, rather than struggling with the math, you instantly know the hypotenuse is 50. Right? Without, uh -huh. without doing any math at all. Well, because when I write 30, 40, that means this triangle is similar to this triangle. So if, is all it is, is this has a similarity ratio of 10 to 1. So every side, the corresponding side of this triangle, the big one, has to be 10 times bigger than this little one here. Okay. So it's... In other words, you're not maybe going to get a lot of three, four, five triangles, but you'll get a lot of this. What's this say? Um, Applying similar so triangles. For six times zero? Uh, no, I, I didn't mean this was zero. I meant what's this side length? If this is a right okay. triangle. 6, 10, and 8. I'm sorry, what? 8. 8 is correct. Right. In other words, you didn't need to go through the square root of 10 squared minus 6 squared. Even though that's what it is, uh, the fact is that comes out to be 64, which is 8. In other words, as long as you recognize that this is a similar triangle to this, then the proportion has to be the same for all the sides. And same thing if I gave you a triangle that was a 10, 26, you would know that this had to be 24. Okay. You with me? Yeah. So these two are the ones that you'll run into a lot. In fact, I would say if you were to take your ACT test tomorrow, you would find at least six triangles on there that were similar to this one, and maybe another six that are similar to that one. So by recognizing them, you save yourself a ton of work, a ton of arithmetic. All right. Now, there are two other special right triangles that let's cover. And this is pretty much it. In other words, everything we have talked about today, in terms of solving right triangles, you're going to be able to do. Now, okay. 
these, you've been studying these two triangles for at least two years, right? The yeah. 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. Well, right. I call these my unit special triangles. And the reason I call them my unit is because opposite the smallest angle is one. That's the side oh, yeah. length, okay? And then this one yeah. is square root of three, and that one is two, and this one over here is one, one, square root of two. So in addition to getting right triangles where they're going to give you two of the three sides, the other situation you have to solve for is when they give you one of these special right triangles and they only give you one side. In other words, if I told you that was a right triangle, and I said this side here is 6, what is this side over here? There's no answer. We don't know because I've only got okay. one of the three sides. However, if I tell you that this side is 6 and that this is a 30, 60, 90, now what is this side? that I've circled. Is that one three? Yeah. In other words, once you figure out the similarity ratio, in other words, the moment I tell you it's a 30, 60, 90, then you know it's a similar triangle to this. So the only thing left to answer is find the similarity ratio, always the first step, and you compare the corresponding sides. This is the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. I always want big to little, so the similarity ratio is 3 to 1. And now, to get this side, I'm going to multiply that by 3 to 1 to get that, and what would this side be, the bottom? So remember that when you're dealing with similar triangles, every side has to be the similarity ratio of its corresponding side. So okay. if similarity ratio is 3 to 1, what does this side have to be? Uh, that's going to be 3 to 1 would have to be square root of 1. That's three times that number right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's all you're doing. Yeah. Is you're just multiplying okay. root three by three. Oh, yeah. So when I give you whole numbers like this, these problems are pretty easy because finding the similarity ratio is a piece of cake. Let's change the problem a little bit. And say now we're looking at a 30 60 right triangle whose hypotenuse is square root of 6. Now let's solve this triangle. So, what's the similarity ratio equal to? For the square root of 6, it'd be. No. In other words, I'm looking for the similarity ratio between this triangle and this similar triangle. And the only reason I know they're similar is because they have the same three angles. There, it'd be. Go ahead. For, is it two square root six for the top? No, you take the bigger number and oh, yeah. divide it by the smaller number. Now, oh, you yeah. know that square root of six is greater than the number two, so I know that yeah. this is the bigger number. This is the bigger triangle. But that's my similarity ratio. So what is this side now? That'd be um, 1 square root of 6. It's 1 times square root of 6 over 2. In other words, it's all okay. I'm doing is multiplying that number by my similarity ratio. Okay. Okay. What's this number? Um, it's 
uh, square root 18 over 6? Over 2. In other words, when I take my similarity ratio oh. and I multiply it by square root of 3, I get square root of 18 over 2. That does mm -hmm. simplify to what? As long as we're talking radicals as part of this session. 18 over 2 simplifies to square root 9, maybe? Well, let's do it exactly. What's the new? Okay. Square root of 9 times what? Uh, square root of 2, over 2. Okay, and then simplify that. Uh, 3 square root 2 over 2. And that's what you do. Just do it step by step. Don't try to do the okay. whole thing. You, you kind of tried to do the whole thing in one step when you first did it. Um, as long as you separate it like this and are, you know, pay attention to detail, you won't make little mistakes. In other words, that's an important key step right there, I think. Separating, actually, almost even writing it like that is an important first step. For one thing, you can have some, like if I told you um, square root of 20, well, that also is the square root of 10 times the square root of 2, right? Yeah. But that doesn't help. doesn't help me reduce it because neither of these is perfect squares. So I'm never going to factor my 20 into 10 times 2. But as long as I factor it into 4 times 5, now that I can turn into a whole number. And that's what you're looking to do. Okay. So a key on a lot of these, in other words, I'm going to give you just one more. What is that equal to? 1. Square root of 10. Think about it for a moment. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16, so it must be a number slightly bigger than 3, right? Yeah. But my question had more to do with if I split that into the square root of 5 times the square root of 2, I haven't really simplified it. I've turned it into two terms instead of one. So we don't do that. That is okay. simplified. You only, okay. you only reduce it if you can pull out a whole number. All right. Okay, and I cannot with square root of 10. So that is simplified. Uh, and you get to where you start recognizing uh, square root of 8 is never simplified because that's always square root of 4 times square root of 2, which is 2 root 2. Uh, but you'll get to where you can recognize which ones need simplifying further. Okay. Uh, that's a good, this is a good session today. Um, covering right triangles is huge. Uh, in one session today, we covered uh, a third of the geometry you will be tested on when you take your ACT. Mark, are you a sophomore? I am. Or a junior, okay. So you won't be taking the ACT until next year, probably. But yeah. you'll see that there are just tons and tons of right triangles that you have to deal with. So, all right. I will let you go, and I will talk to you on Thursday at 4. All right. Okay. Thank you, David.